Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Mike here, Mike's Weather Page. We're doing a little 5 o'clock somewhere quickie. Might have some tropics to look at for next week. Um, we're going to talk about that. I like to look long range in the tropics. Might be waking up a little bit out there. I know we had a couple systems the last few days. Nothing really materialized, but starting to see signs. We might see one pushing a little west to uh, maybe be a little worried about. Um, just remember, I am not a official source of information. We always refer people back to the National Hurricane Center or National Weather Service. Um, they are the official source for tropics. And as you can see with their seven day link here, they're not showing anything that I'm about ready to show yet. So until we see it on their map, nothing's official at all. Now let's talk about July. July, this is your typical map here that we see in July. And uh, we didn't see a lot of activity in July. We normally never do. In fact, the number one thing I hear every season is, hey Mike, the season's dead. Or hey Mike, the season's a bust, what's going on? That's because we usually get a system in May or June. We get a lot of media hype because of the first of the season, you know, first of June season starts. We get a tax-free holiday. Everything is going bonkers with the start of the season. Then we get a little break, and everybody's like, oh, man, you know, the season's dead. Well, it always is, usually. So uh, a couple examples, 2004, um, we did not have our first system until August. And that was a very busy year for hurricanes for Florida. 1992, Hurricane Andrew, Category 5, it didn't get – um, going until the end of August. And uh, last year we had a 60 day stretch. All of July and all of August was storm free. Um, and we, of course, ended the season with some pretty big storms. So as we get into August, you can see the color frequency picks up and we're starting to see, you know, more of these waves possibly being something to watch. And of course, September, very busy. So we look at Africa, Africa satellite. Africa's been spitting out a lot of waves. Africa's looking pretty juicy. Long range modeling has been showing us that we're going to see a lot of precipitation across the main development region. We're starting to see more of these waves popping up. And that's what we're going to be watching. Uh, there, there's some of the modeling that we use. Long range stuff is already really starting to show a potential wave um, next week to watch. Uh, this is one of the maps that I use. Another map that I use here is the European Ensembles. Uh, it's 51 members of the Euro. It's a bunch of different thinks, thinking of the Euro. And it's been very consistent about a system about next week, let's say Wednesday around the 9th of August. We're seeing signs that we can start to see a wave getting going. Um, what really seems to happen is as we get in around the 11th, around the Caribbean, a little below, a little above, we're starting to see signs that, hey, this thing might develop. And some of these reds are pretty strong hurricanes. So... Not 100%, you know, um, confidence. All the members aren't, aren't, you know, agreeing with each other. But we are seeing consistent runs of the Euro showing the time frame the following weekend around the, you know, let's say the 13th, 14th, 15th time frame. You know, and unfortunately, there's really no way to pinpoint anything this long range. Important thing to note that we're seeing, though, is this high pressure system is back and it's probably going to be there, which would allow this thing to, to not escape to the north that we just saw with Invest 96, but more of a west-northwest track. That's what I'm watching more than anything is, is this high-pressure system. If this high-pressure system is intact next week and there is a system, likelihood of this thing going west-northwest, possibly developing in those western Atlantic waters, which are very warm. And could be the Gulf. There's a few down here. But important to note, though, like I said, um, the overall consistency of the 12Z models have been showing that this thing might make it over into the Caribbean or around the Caribbean to watch. And that's enough to at least mention, maybe. This is a blend of modeling. Uh, kind of shows you the general track that we just talked about. And that's a blend of all the models. So there's enough to talk about. Again, timing would be a following weekend. 11th, 12th, 13th time frame, if it made it in this general area. Some of the operational runs, I uh, haven't shown it yet, but I do want to point out the latest Euro here, this is tropicaltidbits.com. The latest European has my attention because it's showing at the last second here, a little bit of vorticity spinning up right here off the coast of Florida. Not a very, you know, long, 10 days, this thing could be anywhere. But the important thing to note here is the main operational run starting to show some sort of vorticity, which indicates maybe development of some sort. Um, and again, that's Saturday the 12th. So we're getting a little consistency here with um, now a main operational run 
beginning to show it. The Canadian model isn't the best model in the world, but it's been showing something too. Uh, so just kind of point that out. You know, it's a little slower uh, with the wave behind it, but it has been showing, you know, this, this is another wave. <laughs> but it has been showing our main wave that we've been talking about um, possibly nearing, you know, this neck of the woods, uh, Western Atlantic. So a couple model support. GFS has been off and on. We don't really use the GFS. I haven't found enough... Uh, confidence with it yet it ha but it has shown a bunch of its ensembles so bottom line we might have something to watch you know a couple things that's going to maybe help this happen um down the road this is another uh, model on tropical tidbits but you got your water anomaly maps water anomalies are way above normal especially in that western atlantic hot water helps storms uh we have another thing called ocean heat content ocean heat content is how hot the water is below the surface it's really starting to show some deep reds and oranges off the around the bahamas uh, a little early for this this is how hot the water goes below the surface another thing we look at is uh, the mjo the mjo when you see the green area that's kind of an enhanced phase around the middle part of august it's getting green that's uh, less um sheer in the atmosphere a um, little more favorable winds this is uh the, Another uh, website, Michael uh, Ventress, I believe the name, uh, showing a possible enhanced stage rolling into about the same time frame. So those are a couple things. You know, if the MJO is cooperative, things things uh, you look at. Looking at shear down the road, very hard to predict shear long range. But, you know, looking ahead, if we were to look ahead, let's say in the next Wednesday, you know, we're seeing light shear. Green is around 20 knots. Um, bottom line with this is that, you know, Western Atlantic, typically with El Nino years, produces a lot of wind shear, which we're seeing uh, right now. But if this system, you know, escapes up to, into this area, going into the weekend, you know, it's, it's not the most favorable conditions, but we're talking 20, 20, you know, knots of shear. So not what we're seeing up here. So, you know, all these things you kind of start to think, you know, maybe might be something to watch. And the last thing, of course, we look at the dust map. So in the short range, there is a big plume of dust coming off through the week here it's going to have to deal with but once once that dust gets to the caribbean here this time of year things start to lighten up and uh, what we're seeing on our latest dust map is this big plume is definitely coming off africa but as we get into the time frame of the 11th beyond uh, the dust is starting to lighten up the dry air so this definitely seems like more of a window of opportunity once it clears the caribbean here of maybe something to try to develop so the big biggest takeaway at this point is high pressure seems like it's building back in which would pretty much block any sort of recurve that's what we're looking at right now is you know upper level steering currents um, until we see a, a change in that then of course i'm going to watch this real close um, and i'm starting to see a little bit more chitter chatter about it so but again always look here on my page mike's weather page.com spaghetti models.com i have all the official national hurricane center graphics and until we see a circle there's nothing to really worry about um, they, they go out seven days, but I do like to look ahead, got my attention, been, been tracking it several days now, but now we're seeing consistency that maybe this time next week, we might have a wave in the, uh, middle Atlantic. So there you go. Thanks for watching here on YouTube. Appreciate you subscribing and liking. Uh, don't forget we go live Monday through Friday, usually every Monday through Friday, 9, 19 Eastern right here on YouTube. Uh, so make sure you, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and, You'll get notified when we do go live. And we got one tomorrow, Thursday. So we hope to see you there, all right? Have a great night.